So this is a brigand, which is rogue hunting. And yeah, I know finally I'm making a bow build. It has to be said, people love bow builds. If you go on the forums, you see it all the time. People are saying, you know, critique my brigand. How do I make a bow build? That sort of thing. So what am I offering that's any different? Well, I made my brigand focus around one item solely, which is the Ichthian Stinger. You can find this thing in Act 5 off the Ichthians, of course, and you can start inheriting it at level 14, level 12, something really, really early. So I chose to take my brigand and scale dexterity. That's kind of a dream come true, of course. You get the DA, that nice, nice DA, and you get your damage on top of it. However, the result of this, and because of the lack of gear on the dexterity side of things, was one, it was moderately inheritance-based. You need a few items, mostly the stinger, everything else you don't really need. And two, it was very glass cannony. That's very far and away from characters that I typically make. But one positive side effect of that is I can finally make those Titan Quest videos, you know, the old school ones that kind of look like this. I was going to use Disturb there, but I was afraid the robot was going to get me. So of course that video was a bit disingenuous. I was fighting Automatoy, and he's basically tailor-made to be stomped by a brigand. I always suspected those type of videos were also disingenuous in the past, but anyway, we're going to continue with the build. First, of course, I'm going to throw the charts on the screen. So if you're just here for the attribute allocation or how to spend your skill points as you're leveling, then take a look at the screen, take a look at these charts, they'll be your one-stop shop. Otherwise, if you want to know more about the build or its reasoning, then continue to listen. We're going to talk about the pros and cons first. The only thing I want to say here is that my baseline is the Haru Specs, that's what I'm comparing against. I think, frankly, that a Haru Specs is a better spear character than a bow character. You're better off making it a spear character, I should say. But just know that I'm, I would be comparing this to a bow Haru Specs. So first, as a pro, you have extreme damage. Because you have Rogue Mastery and Calculated Strike, you'll probably know I have a very low opinion of Marksman Tree. You get these really nice moments where your Ichthian Sting or proc are, is going to line up with your lucky hit on Calculated Strike. Plus, you just get a lot more Pierce Synergy in general. And I'm happy to report that this thing exceeded my expectations with damage. That's a big deal for a ranged character. Because in Titan Quest, your offensive ability does not affect range damage, therefore you cannot crit with range damage, you lose that multiplier entirely. Ended up, that wasn't very a big deal. So as a con, this thing requires moderate inheritance. At the very least, you're going to want the stingers, the normal, epic, and legendary stingers. You need a decent roll, you know, maybe some added pierce damage, make sure the unique property is over 200% so that you get the full conversion when it procs. And to farm that thing, you'll probably know if you've been in that Ichthian area in Act 5, you get rooted left, right, and center. It's, it's the worst thing ever. So do yourself a favor, get some entrapment resistance. Every character can use opponent's horses. And then just farm it till you get some decent stingers. It shouldn't take too long. If you can manage it, get like two Apollo's Will and a Tracker's Helm. Those aren't required, but they scale pierce damage enormously well. Another pro you get all the benefits of the Rogue Mastery. So Haru Specs is great at just being a tank. It's passive defense, you just stand there and you get all the projectile avoidance and all the DA, all that stuff. With the Rogue Mastery, you get some of the more active defensive utility like Mandrake, Nightshade, Flash Powder. Those are a lot of fun to play with. The active CC can be very effective. It scales very well with attack speed, which we're going to utilize in this build. And Rogue in general just has better damage synergy, so you're going to be able to top out your damage a little bit better. Again, no marksman. You got calculated strike. It's way, way better if you use it right. As a con, you have no cast speed. So this is something that kind of sneaks up on you. You probably don't realize it until you've played the game a lot, but every ability has an animation. And every animation has a specific time it takes before the skill goes off. For Flash Powder, it's a lot longer than for, say, Monster Lure. We're talking about fractions of a second here. But if you're looking for Flash Powder to save your life, it's a clutch, clutch situation. 
then you really need cast speed in order for it to go off. Especially if you're stutter stepping and you're trying to weave in a flash powder, you're going to whiff it like 90% of the time, trust me. So because we don't have temporal flux, and because we don't have any room for cast speed on our gear, you're really going to feel the damage on that. So my suggestion is that you use flash powder proactively to set up a nice damage piercing shot or something like that, or in a situation where you know you're about to get surrounded or you're about to die. Not when you're just going to die, like when you're 50% and you need it to save your life, but when that situation is coming, when you see the catalyst, that's when you want to use flash powder. And I'll do one more pro and con then. First, the range is great. This is something I underestimated with ranged weapons with bows. If you're like me, you've spent the whole time in Ragnarok playing with throwing weapons. They're all very overpowered, very good. And I kind of got used to the range on those, but I took for granted how good range was. The bows, of course, can shoot across the whole screen. You can really manipulate AI. You can set up really nice pulls. You can make sure that, you know, you're getting the drop on the enemy. It's very safe. And you can do a lot of very cool and very satisfying things just by having the whole screen as your shooting range. And we'll end on a bad note because this one's kind of funny. Dexterity items, they really suck, man. They're terrible. So I wanted to do this whole thing where I scaled dexterity the whole way through. No strength, no int. So I had to inherit all this very specific gear. It's hard to farm, first of all. And it's itemized just terribly. There's not enough of it. And it's like, oh, hey, you're a dexterity character. You're probably playing hunter. I bet what you need is entrapment resistance, right? Because you don't have that already. I bet what you need is poison res because you don't have herbal remedy, right? It's just way redundant. It does not give you enough defenses all around. It just tunnels into the just the wrong thing, frankly. So very frustrating to play with dex gear. Take my warning on that. You can play at strength, though. It does require basically replacing all of your dexterity with strength to equip those items. But you can do it, and I don't think you'd suffer too much. So next, what type of character this is. Is it a ranged character, melee character? This is going to be an easy one. You are a ranged character, you're using bows, and you're attack base. That means you're not a spellcaster, you're not a hybrid, you spend the vast majority of your time left-clicking enemies. Right? Easy enough. Next, for attributes, the explanation here is that it's a dream to scale dexterity. You get all that juicy, juicy defensive ability, and you get to scale your damage at the same time. I mean, unless you're playing Grim Dawn, that is unheard of in a game like this. Both your offense and your defense in one stat, and you could pretty much tunnel 90% of your stats into dexterity. The problem is the gear sucks, like I said, and in order to make the gear stuff work, you have to transition basically 70% of your dexterity into strength, right? You need like 500 strength. That's not a total waste because four of five of your shots from your stinger are still physical damage. Because of that, I think that it's way better to go for strength in this build, and if I could do it all over again, that's what I would do. Uh, that way you just get a lot more flexibility with the gear that you can equip. For the remainder of your stats, you know, if you're going to go for the strength build or the dexterity build, you're going to have a small amount allocated towards health. You just want enough. Again, this is a glass cannon, so we're not looking to reach that 7k. It's kind of hard. Maybe with the strength build you could. But if you're going dex, I would say 4k is all right. It feels bad for me, but a lot of people are okay with 4k. It seems survivable. I completed Legendary X Max with it, so at least go for that benchmark. So now I'm going to switch over to the database, and we're going to take a look at what kind of gear and stats that you're looking for, affixes, that sort of thing. So we're going to start with the Ichthian Stinger. This thing, right when I looked at it, I knew I wanted to create this character. It has this base 33% pierce ratio, and a chance at increasing that by 200%. Whenever you see increased pierce ratio, that multiplies with your base pierce ratio. So an increase of 200% is exactly 100 conversion. It's not overcapping your pierce, you're not doing more damage. Incidentally, I have seen this number appear on Ichthian Stingers at above 200%. Now, you cannot overcap your elemental conversion, not anymore. So I assume that you can't overcap your pierce ratio either. But I don't know. It's very hard to test that sort of thing. I don't have the spear I would need to test that in-game. I'm still farming for it. So anyway, just know that this 200 
for the most part is just going to give you that 100% conversion to Pierce. So there's a 20% chance you'll convert to Pierce, and that's it, right? Otherwise, you're doing physical damage. Of course, it can roll with prefix and suffix. It doesn't show it here, but the item level to equip this thing is extremely low. You just need a lot of dexterity. That's kind of the benefit of going early dexterity for the dexterity build, by the way. I was able to equip this uh, Epic Stinger by, I don't even know, like Act 3 or Act 4 normal. I was equipping the Legendary one in early Epic mode. So this thing's kind of a beast. And what you're looking for is maybe some pierce damage on it. You can't be too picky. It's not the hardest thing to farm in the world, but it is annoying to farm. At least I found it was annoying to farm. And the only other thing I want to mention is there's three other bows that might contend with the stinger by the end game. Now this is a pierce damage character, but there are some very overpowered other bows that exist. One of them is the neighbor here, a Kyval. This thing just does a monstrous amount of flat damage. It doesn't convert very much into pierce, uh, but you know, this thing, if you have enough attack speed and it has attack speed on it, it's going to do a monstrous amount of damage. Also, Nidbo. Nidbo adds 210 to 290 vit damage with a huge base damage. This thing is absurd, and it leeches a huge amount of life, and it does health reduction. So I suspect that a Nidbo would outperform at Nycthian Stinger, even in a Pierce build. I think this thing is just so overpowered that it'll do that. And the last thing is, I don't even remember the name of this item. It's like some dude's name, the item. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Gooseer's Gift, is that it? I think it's this one. It grants Volley, which is redundant. Uh, so this thing would be much better for other builds. But you might want to try the Akival and the Nidbo and pit it up against the Ichthian Stinger. So as a quick aside, I was thinking about downloading TQ Vault because as of now I've been a Mueller uh, and I decided not to. I just like muling. I don't want to fidget around with a third party program. Uh, I, the reason I bring this up is I was given a vault file by somebody in my chat who was nice enough to help me. I was, I was going to test this myself like Nidbo against the Stinger, that sort of thing, a Kyval against the Stinger. But I decided not to download the program just to do that test. I tried to farm for an Akival and a Nidbo, didn't find them. So that's something I would encourage you to test by the end game. It's not even applicable really until the end game. Uh, you pretty much can't equip these until you've almost beaten the game. So that would just be for the top, top potential of the character. For the vast majority, like 90-95% of your playthrough, you're going to be using the Ichthian Stinger. But if you want to test against a specific bow to see if they're better, if they outperform, the ones you want to look for are Archival and Nidbo, just so you know. Probably it's going to be Nidbo. The next thing you're going to want to look for on your gear is Recharge. Recharge is pretty important. You're going to need attack speed with this build, like I said before. Flat damage, attack speed, procs, more volleys, more mandrakes, right? More nightshades. I mean, nightshades is 100%, but it's quicker nightshades. More calculated strikes, better chance at lucky hit. Very, very, very important you get attack speed. So you want to keep your call of the hunt up 100% of the time. You can see if I max this thing out here. If you plus four it, it's something like a 60 second duration, something like that. If you get about 50% recharge and you plus four this skill, I must have done the math wrong because you can have 100% uptime on this thing. It's somewhere around there. Maybe it's 60% recharge. Regardless, a moderate amount of recharge is what you want just to keep up Call of the Hunt. Are we using it for anything else? Nope, not really. I mean, you get more flash powders, which is kind of cool. But I truly think it's important enough to keep up Call of the Hunt that you really want recharge. Not only that, but you get just absurd scaling to pierce and bleed here. And you get some decent bleed synergy with rogue, so you might as well use this. Keep it up all the time, right? You're going to want this buff. It's a huge difference in your damage. Because of that, recharge is important. Where do you get recharge? I got mine in a couple places. Does Trucker's Hood have it? Let me look. Yeah, Tracker's Hood has 35, so 35% recharge and 100% pierce damage. 
really, really good. And notice the really troll affix here. Like, you need reduced, re you know, entrapment duration on a hunting master. I don't think so. This thing gives plus two to scatter shot arrows, plus one to puncture shot. This is even over capped. It, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. The itemization on dexterity gear just sucks. I can rant about that for a whole video. I'm not going to, though. And the other bit of recharge is something I got from my artifact. I think it's called Jade Emperors. Let me look. Yeah, Talisman of the Jade Emperor, 25%. So I had a total of minus 60% recharge. This thing is a pain in the butt to make, like most Divine Artifacts. So I recommend inheriting it. You can use it at 55, so that's not quite the end of the game, right? And you'll find that you get the Tracker's Hood and this thing at about the same time. By then, you'll have maxed out Call of the Hunt, plus four and everything, and you'll be able to get that nice, nice buff all the time. So recharge, really important on your gear. The next thing you should be aware of is Apollo's. I mentioned this earlier. And the only reason I want to bring this up on screen right now is because it's so good that this is the sort of thing you want to buy your way into. Notice first that the resistance is okay. It exists, right? Poison res, just tons of poison res. Hey, it's a pierce damage item. Let's give it poison res. Thanks a lot. Anyway, you want to equip two of these. This pierce damage is really, really good. Increase in prod speed happens to be good because we're not using the marksman line, so we don't have any prod speed. So if you can, equip two of these. If you can't, it's okay. You can use a typical swap ring or whatever. But the thing is, you might not have the resists to buy your way into this. You're probably way overcapped on poison. And you need other things. You need elemental and stuff like that. So it's more of an end game thing to equip two, but I'd really recommend you try. Otherwise, one is enough. And the last thing to look for on gear is run speed. Now, this is kind of a, a dark horse, just because movement speed is always good for efficiency. But what you're trying to do with this character is to line up these really nice calculated strikes. Every third hit will pierce enemies or every fourth hit will pierce enemies. That means you want to keep your distance from enemies, so that way their vectors are going to line up towards you. If you're further away, the tighter their vectors are going to be towards each other. Uh, what's a better way to explain that? As you run away, enemies tend to bunch up in order to get to you as quickly as possible. They're choosing the path of least resistance, the shortest path as the crow flies, so they're going to bunch up the further away you get. That's going to make them tight enough to line up a calculated strike. There's a lot of monsters with huge hitboxes that you'll hit with an arrow, and then like everything around them is going to get pierced by that arrow. It's not that you've hit them with a volley, essentially, although a volley is very good for cleave. But it's mostly this calculated strike. Conversely, you're going to find enemies like Melano that seem to have the smallest hitbox in the world, and no amount of lining them up seems to help you. But that's a pretty big deal to your playstyle overall, is run speed, disengage from enemies, line them up, calculate strike. And in terms of leveling, this is kind of annoying, by the way. You're not going to have your stinger right away. It's not for a while that you even get to equip it, like level 14, maybe somewhere in Act 2. And so because of that, I wouldn't recommend going with bows. You might equip one. I think I used a, a shield just to get recovery in the early game. I like that. So in the early game, you're going to want to level with Poison Bomb. Uh, poison Bomb is pretty decent. If you put one point into it, you can see 131 poison damage. That's pretty good for just one point. Unfortunately, it doesn't scale amazingly, amazingly well. But even in the early game, you can do like 6 and 6 here. The Shrapnel is a little bit better for AoE. If they're nice and tight and bunched up, uh, or better yet, if you hit the enemy with the bomb rather than throwing it on the ground, Shrapnel's going to do a lot of work. So the strategy that I found with Poison Bomb is to do exactly that. You want to get close to your enemy and throw this thing right at their face. Just throw it right at their face. You want it to explode on an enemy, not on the ground. You're going to get way more mileage out of it if you do it that way. So that's your AoE. For a single target, you're going to have to use Calculated Strike. So even with a spear or whatever you're using, probably a spear with Wood Lore, you're going to be doing a lot of damage to bosses every fourth hit, again, pretty good. So between Poison Bomb and Calculated Strike and all the nice defenses in the early game, 
you should be good to buy your way up to a stinger. So again, don't look too much into, you know, what level I have these masteries on right here. Go to the charts if you want to know the specifics. I'm just talking you through it at this point. By the mid game, once you get your Ichthian Stinger, things get a lot cleaner. You're going to take everything out of Poison Bomb because no one wants to use Poison Bomb, right? Probably not. You get more mileage out of your uh, bleeding damage in this build. Consider Exploit Weakness and also Flush Out. Notice the lack of Poison damage here. So you get more bleed synergy than poison synergy. By the mid game, this is your golden age. You're going to get Envenom Weapon to 1. Again, poison not important. You're going to get Nightshade maxed out. That's an amazing slow. Mandrake, even after the nerf, is ridiculous. With attack speed again, it's even better. You're not going to get Monster Lure yet. You can use it just to get you know a good pull or whatever. I think I might have gotten this by epic mode. It doesn't matter too much. You're mostly looking for Flash Powder, Nightshade, and Mandrake at this point. And you can tell if I go here and I just equip all my epic stuff, I'm only level 30 with all this stuff. Of course, you're going to have Calculated Strike now that you have your Stinger. You'll probably always have Calculated Strike. You'll have had it before in the Poison Bomb days. Maybe a couple points in Disarm Traps just to make things less annoying. But even now, I'm only level 35. This is like, you know, towards the end of normal mode, and you have most of your really good tools already. Uh, work your way up to volley as quickly as possible, and bam, you're pretty much in Act 5 somewhere, maybe at the end of Act 5. And you have a very, very solid foundation already. If you're inheriting your stingers, you're going to be a powerhouse by this point. And then towards the end game, you'll pick up the rest of the stuff. I wouldn't bother with Lay Trap. Uh, it's just you don't have the cast speed for it, and it's too much investment. And it takes away anything you have to cast, even Lethal Strike, as good as it seems, you have to cast this ability. Within one Lethal Strike, you could have hit like twice. And I just, I didn't think it was worth the points to invest in order to get Mortal Wound and Lethal Strike. So I left it alone. You could play with that if you'd like to. But of course, that rules out things like Throwing Knife as well. So what you really want to focus on, maybe you get one in Toxic Distillation just for the plus four skills to do something with it, is you want to max out Disarm Traps. This is going to turn you into the Automatoy Lord, right? You might want a couple points in Open Wound. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, you'll get enough bleed that Anatomy is good. And this is it, of course. Blade Honing only works with swords and spears, not bows. So with Rogue Mastery... This is what it's going to look like by the end game, more or less. And with Hunting Mastery, Wood Lore and Herbal Remedy are the, you know, cream of the crop in the early game. You're, of course, going to get Fine Cover. It's the best chance to avoid projectiles buff in the game. Of course, you want this nice trailblazing. It synergizes very well with your Tracker's Hood, right? Stupid game. And, of course, Gouge, you might as well get a Bleed. You're going to want Reduced Res, as always. This is a great way to scale your damage. Uh, reduced DA doesn't help too much, but if you really are looking for something to spend your points on later, the minus bleed res will help a little. Otherwise, just leave it at 1. And of course, I already talked about Call of the Hunt. This thing is amazing. Gear up with recharge as much as you can to keep this thing up 100% of the time. It's really, really good. You don't need net. Again, it's another thing to click. It's just not worth it. And Marksman, I'll talk about this just briefly. I have a very low opinion of the Marksman line. It seems like it would be the go-to, right? It even adds pierce damage per shot, rather than every fourth hit. Well, that's good and everything, but it's really scattershot arrows that I have a problem with. This thing was nerfed too heavily. They were too heavy-handed, in my opinion. 7 to 9 fragments with this damage. This does not apply your weapon's own damage, by the way. So... What you see is what you get, of course, scaled with your percent multipliers, but, you know, zero times a thousand percent is still zero. The, the, the magnitudes are just too low. The bleed damage is not effective enough and just keeps reapplying over itself. This isn't going to kill anything. That's the short of it. It's 12 points just to do basically nothing. You're going to get way more mileage just out of the pierce from puncture shot arrows. But if all you want is the pierce anyway... This isn't even guaranteed pierce, right? So just to get the guaranteed pierce, 
every fourth hit with this huge damage and a chance to lucky strike. It's way, way, way better. Just trust me on that. This is a huge investment, 36 points. This is 14, and it's not even close. So I would say no on Marksman. I tried it at a couple points in my own playthrough. I tried to give it a fair shot, but just understand that I already hated Marksmanship since AE. This was before Ragnarok, so I knew this wasn't going to be very good. And then, of course, there's Monster Lure. I always try to get this by Legendary. Scales very well by Legendary. It's very tanky. For six points, this thing is overpowered. Uh, but it's great for setting up poles on bosses, Manticore, things like that. They love to attack this Monster Lure. Don't ask me why. But whatever, you can kill Manticore very, very quickly. And during that time, he's just going to be derping around with your Monster Lure. You don't really need this explosion thing. It's kind of fluffy. It stuns, like who cares, for one second. That's not a big deal. Alright, so we're going to go into my gear and how this character plays now. Again, I went with a dex setup, so this is going to look very different with strength, I presume. Uh, but here I'm just going to talk about the dexterity stuff, what I would want to improve. For the most part, that just means more attack speed. It's very hard to scale attack speed on slow weapons. This is a very slow base. And you can see I have a nice attack speed roll on my Artemis. Really nice attack speed roll on my stone binders. So where can I get more? I could get a better pair of stone binders that roll attack speed, maybe. Uh, I could get attack speed to roll on my Ichthian Stinger. Stuff like that would really help. I don't think I could conceivably get it anywhere else. But just those two things with my buff up would allow me to get somewhere in the neighborhood of 190%, close to 200. That would be a dream come true for me, despite my low resists. If I could trade one thing, one thing, it would just be for more attack speed. I just want more and more attack speed. That would make this character 100 times better. So just keep that in mind. I'm going to go through my gear real quick. I talked about the Apollo's Will. I used the Reforge on this thing. I always get garbage when I do that, so it doesn't even matter what it was. It was energy. I got the Tracker's Hood. Again, used the uh, Reforger on that. 18 armor. Nice. Nice. Got it. 18 armor. It's just terrible. Uh, this other ring is pretty decent, actually. It's got 20 flat piercing damage from the Owl suffix. I was kind of stuck using a non-epic ring. I wanted to use another Apollo's, and I have another Apollo's here. But I just couldn't. If I, if I use this, I lose, like, all of my vitality res. My elements get even worse. It's just too much. You know, you have to stop somewhere. This was already way too glass cannon -y for me with its 4,500 health. So uh, I just kind of used this ring. I would love to buy my way into another Apollo's, but it ain't going to happen. I'd much rather just focus on more attack speed. So my Stonebinders rolled uh, armor and slow res. Not too good, but not too bad either. Slow res is okay. This chest piece is what I went for. It's the Skirta of o Orvar Odor. Something unpronounceable. But you can wear it at 43. It's a great inherited item. Easy to farm. And it's a dexterity piece. The stats are okay. The granted skill is okay. I don't think uh, the flat fizz gets converted to pierce. I think conversion in this game happens very, very early. But just note that it was pretty much the only chess piece that I could use unless I wanted to farm something like a veteran's prowler monster infrequent. That was not going to happen. That thing's too rare. My necklace, just use it specifically for resists. The plus one skills was nice because it rounded out my plus four. Uh, but mostly I just used it for the resists. Honestly, I could have used this for a, a green necklace or something. That way I could use the Apollos and get the demon's blood on the necklace for the Vit res. But I can also always just swap this double Apollos when I know there's no Vit res. If you're aware enough of the campaign and where the Vit res happens, then you could do that. It's a little bit dangerous otherwise. And I felt very lucky to get these. Veli Samus Greaves, another dexterity piece, lots of resists. The best thing about this is actually the movement speed. 25%, that's amazing. Not to mention the 14% dex, or the de defensive ability, and the 338 health. Very, very good. Again, this build is all about attack speed, movement speed. You want as much of it as you can possibly get. And lastly, the Talisman of the Jade Emperor. You really need the 150 resists you get from this thing. 
and you really need the recharge. Just trust me on that. The granted skill doesn't even matter. It happens to be okay, but it's not the greatest thing ever. And I got really lucky with the completion bonus. Just kidding, it sucks. I got 210 energy. But that's okay. Ideally, I could have gotten something with more res, yet again. Would help me equip this Apollo's Will. But anyway, we're going to see how this thing plays. So of course you can see I run very fast. Now the game is sped up by 50%, so if I slow it down, this is the normal run speed on very fast. This is without any outside speeding up of the game. But of course I don't like to play like that. So I'm going to speed it up more. The play style is pretty simple. So it's all about rounding up enemies, putting them in a straight line, and piercing them. This build is much, much better at fighting small enemies than, I'm sorry, large enemies than small ones. You can see you can line yourself up in such a way that you're piercing against more than one target. You don't want to stand right here and then not have a chance at piercing this guy, right? You want to line up your targets. And then as they close on you, you just kind of back off. And that's pretty much the play style. Of course, you use Call of the Hunt. Uh, eventually, you'd get this thing on 100% uptime. You can see the damage just skyrockets. Uh, if I look at my sheet DPS, it's 13,000 right now. We'll see what it is when it falls off. And is it going to fall off? thing lasts forever. That's another nice thing about it. So I'm going to go ahead and speed up the game so it falls off and I can show that. There we go. So it fell down to 8,000. So this thing, I almost double my DPS. I add 6,000 DPS whenever I use that thing, or 5,000. So that's enormous, and it's already up again. I can use it, thanks to my recharge. So definitely, definitely get that skill. And other than that, if you need to pull against a harder type of enemy, you can use Monster Lure. Sometimes the enemies are really dumb, like that one. It's best to use it to pull, to body pull for you, which is this dainty effort of stepping forward, using it, stepping forward a little bit more, using another one, it's a little bit further. So you could use that to pull, you know, Manticore or something like that. You don't have the cast speed to stutter step and use this flash powder. You can see my character's hesitating when I'm trying. There, it finally went off on my fourth attempt. If you're stutter stepping and you're getting used to that, it's very, very hard to cast flash powder that way. You need some cast speed. So what you would want to do instead is be proactive with it, is to do it right now, hold it down for a little bit. Use it to break away from your enemies. If you think you're about to get surrounded or something like that, that's when you use it. So this is all terrible, terrible fights for this character. I picked a real winner in this zone. But in general, you can outrun everything. You can line up every shot. It's all good. You'll take damage, yes. Do you have leech? No. I don't have leech on this character at all. Having even a small amount would help, but isn't really required. You have so much run speed that you can simply disengage and just wait for your potion. That's more than enough. But, you know, add it to your heart's content. So I just picked up a battle marker. 186% with my buff, that's 213. This is going to feel really nice. So this is even the bad enemy type, but I have so much attack speed that it doesn't really even matter how big or small these enemies are. I can just pick them off very, very quickly. Mac A are really nice targets because they're just big enough in hitbox that I can pierce them well. So it feels really nice. Troglodytes are your bread and butter. These things just feel so good to kill. Anything large like a troglodyte is just going to get massacred by this character. And that's really all there is to it. There's nothing more to say. Um, I'm not using any of the careful pulling techniques. I'm just kind of running in and shooting. Hey, nice. I don't have this item yet. But anyway, that's all I have to say about this character. It is a joy to play a bow character. Again, I love bow characters in any ARPG. This is the most fun and effective bow character I've played, both in terms of damage and just mob effectiveness. Honestly, if I were in an area like this, I'd just run past these guys. You should too. Uh, the next build coming is going to be a pet class. It's going to use Rogue Mastery again. It's Nature Rogue. And after that, I've got some Grim Dawn coming. But don't worry, more Titan Quest after that. I have a Juggernaut that I'm about to play on Twitch. 
it's going to be a deathless x max juggernaut so if it dies i'm just going to delete it and try again so if you want to come watch that i'll be doing that this weekend the end of march 2018 otherwise stay tuned for more youtube content and thanks for watching